Let us start this lecture, a thought process from Rabindranath Tagore. He says that trees are earth's endless effort to speak to the listening heaven. It is a very beautiful statement and uh, let us recall uh, what we learned in the last lecture. We are basically looking at how the wall being made and various you know uh, walls we have looked at it and we are discussing about bombos. And we will now see the reinforce uh, you know uh, bombo wall and along with the mud. And there are as I told like there are several uh, way of doing these are the huts and then wattle and daub is there. And wattle are traditionally made from wood or bamboo or any other uh, like maybe uh, sticks which will be available plentifully in that area. And the panels are dubbed with the mud and straw mixture up to the thickness of 50 to 150 mm depending on that. <coughs> this is what I am showing of course, uh, here these are the bambos right and it can be cane also. See this can be made of cane any other uh, reed what you can say reeds you can think of and this is or cane or any other materials. <coughs> So, advantages if you look at it, it is easier to construct and it is cheaper to construct but needs maintenance. It is elegant and fine for seismic zone right <coughs> and it can be made only where cane or bamboo is available locally. Basically, you need not to really transport and then you know material and the cost will be very high when you transport here you can have in your own backyard you know if you can grow. And as you know that bamboo grows in a 2-3 years, you know you can having enough bamboo to make your house right. And even if you take one bamboo out of the tree, it will not, it will it will not spoil that is the best good part of the bamboo. And cow dung and the local vegetable husk and local available grass and straw can be used and this is being sown here you know again this is the thing right and this is the uh, straw are being used right along with the mud they can use local materials and this uh, rice husk is being used this is basically rice husk. Rice husk is a good insulating material it is generally applied to the outer layer of mud plaster because it is water repellent even if water will fall on that you know it would not erode the mud if it is there. So, that is why rice husk is being used very much. Of course, the advantages will be similar low cost, cool inside in summer, warm in winter, easy to construct, good strain due to reinforcement right and uh, the good against vibration particularly you know like in earthquake and other regions and uh, reasonable durable right. Uh, if you add this uh, sawdust and other local material which will be there right. And disadvantage in disintegrative there is a permanent moisture like you know you know uh, particularly in the coastal areas there might be a little problems and wash out in floods and fire susceptible right that is the one uh, bad thing about but when you use mud it won't affect that much so there is a practice of uh, natural geotextile materials right and in the form of uh, geo grid or the geo net kind in ancient India and using the string of uh, basically coconut coil. If you look at this is the Sanskrit slokas I am not going to read fully, but you can say Nari Kela Phala Charma Sarang Jala Mau po, Pohe Cha <coughs> right. And these are the nets which are used made out of coils and the coil fiber are threaded into strong cords. Of course, this uh, fiber this cord can be 2 to 6 mm. And uh, this is a you know it can be horizontal, verticals and other things and this is being used in the earlier days even the fort area. So, that you know it will be having you know uh, good strength and then durability also and where sand and slits are only available for constructing the material not stones are not available you can use this right a substitute. <coughs> And mud wall is uh, basically a ancient you know techniques like because cob what you call it some people call cob also, cob is an ancient earth building technique mixing of earth, 
sand, gravel or pebble, silt and straw with little bit water, right. And this of course, proportionate is important and if you can see that there is a, I have shown you like this is the mud wall, right. And even uh, this house is existing today in UP, I got from one village. And uh, if you look at they have made this a very good house and uh, of course, there is a little bit cracks here, one has to maintain it. And uh, if you look at the good soil for this wall will be gravel around 15 percent, sand 50 percent and silt will be 15 percent, clay will be 20 percent. But you know you need not to worry about this much, this is of course, uh, better if you could get. But people will be knowing they can put this, this and then and, 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 and also test it like whether it is good or not like by hand by their, their own judgment right they will be knowing those people who are using. But of course, most of us we do not know which is the good or bad or ugly because we do not have experience, but those people are having also use a judgment. And it is the low cost uh, of course, uh, if available locally right uh, and uh, less skill is required and appearance is aesthetic and natural like right? that is a good thing. And I will show you also how we have improvised this wall and structurally capability and heat and sound insulation. Of course, uh, the fire and vermin resistance right like uh, it because mud you know is uh, good you know it will resist the fire and durability and moisture resistance unlike the bamboo when you use and other things that will be problematic. And it can uh, breathability you know like it can breathe it can also the moisture and air uh, kind of things and less toxic in nature. Because um, if you look at modern days we use paints on that and that paints are very, very toxic we do not know and we are not aware about it. And keep the room cool and healthy and of course, uh, desirable less bonding between the mud and big pebbles if you are using that is also a problem. So, you will have to use the pebble proper size of the pebble not easy to handle after certain height. But if you look at the history particularly you know other countries also like they have used very big uh, houses even you know 3, 4 floors and then big musk are there in Iraq and Iran you can see that and affected by flood and torrential rain ok. And let us uh, look at improvised mod wall right. And this is the improvised mod wall which you can see it looks very nice you know. And of course, they are using some binding material here one can use uh, Portland cement and also one can use lime and other things. I will be uh, also talking about compressed wall little later on like you can get also the very good strength and stability. And this is another one this interior this is the exterior kind of thing you can have nice things See, you cannot think of that this is made out of mud this wall right in today. So, what I uh, what I want to emphasize not that we will just look at them, but we can improvise it and then use it today right. That is the point we should learn from this lecture and then uh, from our uh, ancient wisdom and uh, modern stole composites. You can have stone and you can also join together, but these are not uh, size stone, it will be any size I have shown this also one way, but this is not good. You should have a proper size and made and then you can use uh, as a mortar, mud as a mortar, a joining or binder. But low cost if locally available and less skill required right. And this argument is a less stable against vibrations and other things. Uh, history of maximum failure during earthquake because these are not very stable right. But if it is a stone at least it will be stable properly stone means stone properly dressed and then properly placed with a certain weight uh, like your temple structures, but these are not like temple structures. And uh, of course, for temple structure there is proper standard is being maintained and less bonding between mud and stone not easy to handle after certain height this is all the problem is because these are all different shape and sizes stones are being used. So, that is not really very good one has to adopt. So, let us look at roofing materials roofing will be several kind thatched roof, bamboo or wood roof, stone and brick roof, handmade tiles, 
bamboo corrugated sheets and other material there are several kinds you can see and it may vary from region to region and I will uh, this is whatever I am showing is little bit tips of the iceberg there are several things are there in this country and uh, thatched uh, is one of the oldest form of roofing according to me it is as old as Indian civilization and we have uh, we will see maybe in the afterwards when you talk about town planning uh, in uh, about that. And this is the one kind of uh, thatched roof you can see basically roof of covering made of dry vegetation like straw if you look at these are basically straw and palms, water reeds other natural growth you can think of. And it is uh, a very old roofing method has been used both in tropical and temperate climate like India because it is a good insulation of heat and is uh, not very popular among the people in recent time because of two factors. One is that people are very much you know interested to have a pakka house or the you know concrete and this thing and maintenance is very low uh, very high in case of thatched house unlike the concrete. And beside this uh, also like uh, today uh, labor it is more labor intensive and uh, even the straws are not available because <laughs> it is costly. And advantage of course, uh, when the, it is related to the agriculture then it is economical lightweight bad conductor of heat. But if you want to buy the straw from the market and then use then it will be little costlier. And also the people are not available today to make this house the skill is not with the people today. And disadvantage of fire susceptible less durable need to change periodically because we, uh, in each maybe 3 to 4 years you will have to change or maybe sometimes 5 years. And uh, good attachment required with the reefs so that it can bear the heavy wind blow. And uh, base let us look at basic principle of making a roof uh, making a thatched roof of course, you need to have a truss and then it was made of bamboo or the wood uh, and it has to be done properly and then properly designed to take the load right. And uh, this is of course, the carding the straw like uh, if you look at you will have to separate it and put it and this is the thatching of the roof and uh, thatched roof must be as simple as possible. It should have ability to adapt to the free curve shapes kind of things because the, of course, here it is not shown, but suppose you are having you can have that and uh, thatched uh, around uh, 80 to 150 thick was used earlier days right depending upon the your rain and then you know torrential rain and other thing area wise. And average cut length of the straw will be around 700 mm of course, you can manage with the lower little bigger it will be better you know kind of things the labor cost will be reduced right. And also the here if you look at the it should be have the design of the uh, what you call this truss will be dependent on the straw length right because the uh, what you call the sparse you will be pushing putting it will be interval will be decided by this ok. And the straw bundle used for roof must be strong supple and able to uh, resist the effort to break it by twisting a handful continuously. So, therefore, people use some kind of tight and then put it. If you look at these are the poles here this is a pole right. Poles would be around something 50 to 100 uh, millimeters diameter and maybe we space around the 400 to 800 millimeter apart depending upon the design of the roof and also the truss. If it is very heavy then you will have to take the load of that. And if wall is there wall will take care of it, but in some places you do not you will use the wall you use the pole right. And uh, overhangs these are the overhangs right it will be around 600 1200 mm to protect the mud wall from the erosion and direct exposure of the wall to direct heating from the sun in summer. And uh, if you look at that depends upon uh, what you call the area where it is right what is the as I told the, the path of the sun taken in the winter and the uh, summer season has to be taken care. 
and rain water must not be allowed to discharge from a high level of roof to another thatched roof at lower level. Let me tell you the people have designed their houses earlier days, the height of the thatched house in such a way that you know it will be um, what to call preventing the sun, summer sun particularly to enter into your house one over another and that is a beautiful thing which I had seen somewhere and when I inquired they told that this will be like you know when the sun will move it the shadow will be coming in another roof so that it would not be heated that much. So, let us look at a video how the thatched house uh, can be made you know this is the small video and this is the straw which is has to be you know uh, trimmed here this is the bundle of straw right and depending upon the length what is required which will be dependent on the uh, what you call the distance between two spar right which is not shown here and uh, unfortunately this kind of people are not there today who are having school skilled enough to have uh, you know thatched house. So, that is the problem today and uh, of course, there are several other things like coconut leaf uh, roofs are being used uh, particularly in the coastal belt uh, of the south India. If you look at this uh, two story uh, building uh, like which are having coconut uh, roof this year and here they might be using the uh, maybe wood planks or maybe the mud uh, you know uh, house mud roof what we will be having and uh, mud timber flat roofs if you look at it is uh, most popular in Gangetic plain in UP, MP, Vihar even in Jammu Kashmir you can find and Deccan plateau and some parts of Karnataka, Telangana, Rajasthan and also central Maharashtra you will find. <coughs> even it is uh, because I have seen in UP this kind of mud timber flat roof uh, particularly in rural areas. And Indian mud roofs are normally flat with mud bricks on the supporting platforms of wooden planks, reeds and bamboo matting palms or even uh, palm of coconut leaves any matting you can use right mat. And uh, sometimes people use also the brick and mud okay, apart from your wood planks right. And uh, let me show you a house here. Uh, uh, this house is basically something around uh, 40 years old, 40 to 50 years old. My my student, who is residing in Trivandrum, he told me, and he sent this is his own house, and in rural area, of course, and it has been modified later on. And this is uh, the roof is basically mud timber flat roof, right? And um, uh, and this, if you look at this, is the planks. And uh, this is the beam, if you look at this is your beam here uh, and these are wooden planks kind of things are used. And here what will happen that mat, uh, what you call timber or the wood plank right, this will be uh, kind of thing around 1.5 to 2 inch depending upon the load what it is coming. It may be more than that, this I have shown it typical. And there is a straw mat or maybe bamboo mat or something given so that they, it will soak the any water will be passed through this mud because when the rainy season the mud may absorb some water. So, this has absorbed so that it should not timber should not, should not get affected by that right and this is being used and this life is people says uh, you know around something 100 years. And even some people claim more than that, I do not know and I did not get any data. Let us look at what are the advantages of using mud roof over the cemented roof. Mud is truly natural, cheap and uh, local material right and it provides excellent heat insulation and internal part of the house is cooler in summer and hotter in winter. Life is around 100 years, of course, I have talked with several people I have arrived at this uh, years. Whereas, the life in uh, the cemented roof is around 50 years and cement you will have to buy from the market and it is a poor heat uh, you know uh, for heat insulation. So, and it act as a heat source you might have observed in your when you are using the ceiling fan in summer. Lot of heat will be coming and they, they put you know uh, coming towards your uh, the body and from the top to that 
and it is unfortunate we are using that ceiling fan. We are basically instead of cooling ourselves, we are taking the heat from the cemented roof and then bringing down, you know it is a foolishness to do that. And we are basically one has to have a ceiling, ceiling kind of things, right, so that uh, this heat should not come, but we are not using it. Then after that you use a ceiling fan, right. And uh, uh, also the, it can be mud roof, you know mud, uh, in the mud roof can be recycled, so also the planks and other things and is reusable. And concrete can be one time you can use, you are also it is using a lot of, you know energy for doing that. For mud no energy, you will have to use what you call just dig it and then use it, you know like or you will have to use the mud from the ponds or some other places. It cannot be recycled and dismantling cost is low, but concrete house if you want to dismantle it is very high and construction cost is very low because any ordinary person can do. Here you need a specialty, higher cost of construction and stronger in compression uh, in so far mud is concerned and so it is very good for the uh, roof. That means mud is a very good material for the roof. Whereas, the cemented you know a crack may appear if not properly casted and cured properly and also uh, you know uh, cost of construction of the concrete house or cemented uh, roof is very high, right. And uh, of course, there will be disadvantages mud is eroded easily by water, mud has low strength of course, uh, you know like it weighs poorly in the event of earthquake. And uh, of course, uh, cemented if you compare it is a good resistant to earthquake uh, provided you know it is not very severe, low uh, range you know richer scales, Richter sorry Richter scales. If it is low one can manage, if it is high then it will be devastating. Uh, and uh, high maintenance is required with the e, you know a few intervals of, uh, you know after certain intervals of years one has to maintain. Uh, the mud roof and so also the concrete also one can do otherwise you know seepage will be a problem. And mud soaks up rain water and becomes very heavy and uh, of course cemented roof uh, would not soak the rain water. And uh, mud roof is susceptible to the, uh, mechanical damage whereas the damage due to the mechanical you know uh, forces in case of concrete is not that much provided the uh, load is not that heavy like in earthquake or heavy cyclone or landslides you know this also can not manage. Uh, the load uh, due to the what you call earthquake or heavy cyclone or the landslide cannot be managed well by the event cement room. So, <coughs> therefore, uh, if you look at it is having certain advantages. Let us look at land, allow the bamboo or the wood or the grass roof kind of things. And this is the bamboo roofs which is well designed and then it has to be joined properly also these are joints right. And uh, it has to be you know properly maintained so that water can fall and this thing. And this is the, of course a made of uh, kind of a bamboo also and uh, this is the one which is made of wood if you look at this is the wood roof. And sometimes people use uh, over it brick or maybe some mud can also be used, but even you can also use some mat on it right on the top of it. And uh, of course, these are uh, proven techniques it is um, uh, you know uh, what you call durable particularly when you use bamboo and other thing bamboo should be seasoned properly that is also important. And is good strength uh, aesthetically and then good for holistic health but creates a environment, good environment inside house, you would not feel you know suffocated by the concrete and other thing. So, from that point of view good and it is a biodegradable that is a very important one. And it is a eco friendly in the sense it is not uh, guzzling the energy and creating some greenhouse gases like your cement and other things you know. So, also the uh, iron rods. So, hand uh, made uh, tiles if you look at people can make and dry it and even they can bake it and not much skill is required to manufacture. Installation and maintenance does not require special skill you just keep properly ok. Of course, to some extent skill is required, 
but not that sophisticated skill is required can be manufactured by the local uh, soils right and good for air circulations and never feel suffocated inside the house and not durable that much as the concrete but however one can manage up to 10 years you know kind of things what people are having and uh, brick and lime roof which is uh, if you look at I am showing here that uh, this roof I have got in uh, nearby IIT Kanpur there is a just adjacent to IIT Kanpur there is a village Nankari I got this house if you look at this is your roof. If you can see this thing is a arc here. Now, this arc is made and it is uh, what uh, the person is claiming it is more than 60 years old this house and it is not maintained properly let me tell you there it is abundant <laughs> they are not using they are going to dismantle it also and without maintenance they could manage to get uh, 60 years okay. and which is not in that bad condition from the look you can see and there is a another uh, you know question arises this arc how it is working. If you look at these are the forces acting on the structures right and these forces is being transferred over here right to that and this is a very important stone which is known as the load stone or the keystone key brick you can say here this will be uh, uh, what you call load uh, brick right. And the acting forces due to the weight and and also the human being suppose you can have a you know uh, moving around you can have go for a second story building. It is result to the compressive stresses in turns because this forces is transferred to this way this is compressing you know right and uh, in turn eliminate the tensile stresses here nearby right it is being joined so the force is coming and which is also known as the arc action because of that it is basically being remaining and then of course you can use this um, kind of a motors here or the binders so that it will remain but how they might have made it and keep in mind this is the very large arc here this is the very very small arc here okay what they could have done they could have made a frame like this beforehand right right and frame of course it could have been a truss kind of thing joining so that load can sorry load can uh, take right kind of structures right and then they could have set these uh, bricks right put it and then uh, of course uh, keep in mind that these bricks would be a proper size that is very important and such so that this center will be coming to that and this center of you know this thing will be matching with this radius that is the important point one has to make right. Brick making and putting it is a little lot of skill is required and so also each brick has to be looking at uh, you know this load whatever it will be coming. And uh, this is the house which you can make brick and lime you know you can make two storied building three storied building also people have used it and there is a another way i happens to see in kanpur and this is again in a dilapidated condition by the side of um, ganga it is in sivrajpur this technology is little different this is basically what you call uh, the vertical the arc is vertical in nature in this case is vertical arc this is the horizontal arc if you look at these are all arc horizontal arc right and how it is working and they they might have have a you know frame kind of thing they could have used and if you look at the center there will be some center here some other place not shown here that brick size has to be properly maintained and kept. So, therefore, it is very important to uh, what you call see that this kind of technology can be revived such that it can be you know uh, used even today and without getting resorting to the uh, concrete and the lime is far superior as compared to the Portland cement 
because you can make it locally and then you can uh, use it and also from the heat transfer point of view it is having you know better uh, properties right. And advent is old technique durable and usable and it is quite cheap to make it, but the skill uh, you know with which we can make is not available today with the people that is a very important challenge one has to look at it. We can revive this technology. So, there is a rammed uh, mud wall is a uh, old uh, building techniques um, it is found in ancient India not the in the modern way, but in a little different way and it relies only on the natural material walls are built out of normal compacted mud and temporary form work is built into which mud is placed and compressed to have a compacted wall and uh, let me show you uh, this is the house which is built out of this compact uh, rammed mud wall right and this is the thing how you can do like you can have a this a frame in which you will be ramming this uh, mud and uh, let me show you that and you are having a mallet here and these are the frames right which has to be uh, uh, you know supported properly and then you can put uh, you know uh, ram it we uh, this frame is we call it form work right of course there will be plinth label here and then you can having and ideal mud consists of good mix of clay 10 to 40 percent silt around 10 to 40 percent sand 30 to 50 percent and very fine gravels, but people do use in modern time cement and even lime can be used and both weight bearing capacity and non weight bearing walls can be built. Of course, when it is weight bearing you will have to increase the strength right and multi story you know building can be made out of this provided the walls are of adequate thickness and minimum thickness is around 30 centimeter mainly to allow the stability and thermal mass. Of course, two to st three story building can be built uh, with increased wall thickness and it is eco friendly and recyclable and also sustainable. If you look at this kind of technology earlier days use in fort walls you know particularly outer walls will be made out of compress uh, uh, what you call or the rammed mud wall and they were using elephant for making that you know load wise ok. So, um, uh, let me show you a, a video just to say how it is being done and it is uh, done in uh, modern time in uh, Uttarakhand in some region and if you look at uh, this is the technique they have used and this is a uh, two plates here and one and they are using a person is just standing and putting his own load. So, that you know he is also pressing it and after this of course, uh, this is the one pressure you can think of this is the handle of the pressure which will be uh, you know pressed by the both the side of the uh, form work or the uh, plank wooden plank. So, that he is doing right now, so that the it will be compressed right both the vertical compression and the horizontal compression has to be given. So, that it will be uh, take a proper shape and compacted. And they have also uh, uh, made this house themselves all family members and including the roof also if you look at this roof this is the roof which is basically made out of mud ok in recent time it is not the old time even they have improvised the technology and then they have used it. So, uh, you might have seen mud staircase, but for me it was a great uh, this thing I could uh, you know get a mud staircase which is made of these are the steps right steps of the staircase and it is still being used in uh, rural areas of UP. Uh, and uh, particularly with the poor people who cannot afford to have a concrete house they are using today. And uh, I was having a video uh, maybe due to paucity of time I will not show you. It can be made with natural material it is eco friendly and semi skilled people can make it. And uh, of course, the more maintenance is required it will be suitable inside house 
and it takes more space these are the disadvantages and uh, it is suitable for straight staircase like straight but if you want to have a, a winder staircase like in modern time due to space what we are using you cannot use it but however we can uh, really improvise it find out ways and means how to do that and it is mostly used uh, in rural areas like Gangetic Plain, UP, Bihar and West Bengal also to some extent, right. And this is the huts in Rajasthan, if you look at this a particular shape is there and this we call it as a bung and this a very nice decorated uh, walls they were having that is the aesthetic things and they are having. And this is the same thing and uh, which is uh, known as bhanga houses in Kutch and Gujarat which is basically in seismic zone and bhanga houses is traditionally construction type in Kutch district of Gujarat state which has a very high earthquake risk as I told just now. And it consists of single cylindrical shaped room right like this it is a single cylindrical shape it is not a rectangular shape it is a cylindrical shape and uh, bhanga has uh, a conical roof this is like a cone right this roof is like a cone right and uh, supported by cylindrical walls right these are all cylindrical and bhangas has existed for several hundred years and is quite durable and appropriate for pre prevalent in desert conditions this is meant for desert condition because any side will wind will come it won't affect it the roof will be balanced properly you know that is the beauty of this house and due to its robustness again natural hazard as well as the pleasant aesthetic housing is also known as architecture without architects right nobody has made people have made that and it looks very beautiful right you can see and uh, these are the some other houses in uh, which are having thatched roofs and which one and they are they do always indulge in paintings the walls and other things. And these are also the what you call the windows they are having. And uh, the construction of the Vanga house is basically as I told is circular in plan with cylindrical shape. So, this is uh, basically the circular in shape and uh, inner diameter of Bhanga house is typically between 3 meter to 6 meter right and generally this house will having three opening one is the of course the door right here and there will be windows also another windows two small windows and during earthquake if you look at which happened in the Vuj region of rich, uh, Richter scale of 7.6 in 2001, it was not really very much affected. And uh, as the record says that very few Bhangas experienced significant damage in the epicentral region which is may be attributed to the poor quality of construction material and imp improper maintenance of the structure because you need to have maintain. And why it is so? Because due to the circular shape wall in the plan, this is the circular shape, right? And inertial forces develop addition a thick wall required, right? Inertial forces are developed so that it balance each other. And the thick walls required for thermal insulation, high in plane stiffnesses, which provide a excellent performance under the lateral load when the loads are coming it is all balancing because of circular in shape. And uh, it has also been observed that the failure of bhangas in last earthquake caused by the few injuries to occupy due to type of collapse right. So, this is a very good house uh, you know which having of course, this thatched house will having what you call vertical wooden uh, post which will be uh, there to make it balance kind of things and structural rigid. So, uh, of course, the heart style in South India will be little different and these are the I have shown you like uh, you know different styles of huts in the rural uh, South India right. And um, there is a one house I am thinking to discuss of course, uh, you know each region will be having different kinds of house design which I 
could not cover in this lecture, but however, I will urge upon people to look at it and document it if possible and send to us uh, and take some video and pictures right of the, those houses of particular regions. And this is a uh, typical to the Nilis tribe uh, of Arunachal Pradesh, this house. And this house floor level is raised something 2.5 meter from the ground level, right. And ceiling level is around something 2.5 meter from the floor level. Like you look at, if you look at this, this height is generally, it is not very strict 2.5 meter. It may be varying, but generally average 2.5 meter. Right. And this is around 2.5 meters. If you look at uh, this is the thatched portion overhangs and this is the V shaped kind of thing they use. And uh, these are all uh, what you call foundation you can see that plan consists of rear barandas right on the back side common room with a fireplace and also very important thing how they make a fire in this wooden house. These are all bamboo houses. Okay. It is not having a floor of mud or some other thing, it is that. That is very interesting which I would not be discussing, but it is they know how to do that. And uh, like side verandas, there will be a lot of verandas. Roof is made of bamboo truss and toko leaves in that areas and palm leaves, cane leaves, a jungle banana leaves. There are several kinds of leaves they can use. And um, of course, the longevity of improved type of indigenous house is about 20 to 25 years, but the maintenance is called for 2 to 3 years like any other thatched house. And this wooden foundation, these are basically foundations, you know, gets rut due to the bacterial action and there is a danger of structural collapse also, the one has to look at it. Basically, it requires the what you call uh, maintenance. If you look at these hill areas, they need to have houses like that. That is the reason why they were making. And to have a concrete house in this region is a hell of affairs. Okay. It is not that ordinary people, you need design. And they were knowing how to do that. These houses, if you look at this side, your foundation will be high because this is a slope. This is a slope. Right. And they were knowing how to do and this has to be protected and this uh, you know the in indigenous knowledge will be having. Of course, there is a ladder here to you will have to get up into the house. right? And this is the of course, various bamboo architecture I have taken need not to be from our country, but just to show you that bamboo can be a good material you know. So, uh, thank you very much actually I have just give you a glimpses of the housing in rural areas, it is not exhaustive, but lot of science involve it and lot of things you can learn from it and we need to preserve those technique, methodology and also the skill with the people. And they should find out what they want to do according to their region, not that you know copy and paste the concrete and make it a concrete jungle. So, we will have to uh, retain our heritage and culture of making house and doing it ourselves and taking the all the scientific aspect into it. Thank you very much listening. I hope and wish that you people will do something and uh, at least record it and preserve it. That is the important. Thank you very much.